the spider that was here and it's not a dangerous spider like this is where I lived and it's a 15 by 15 foot room and the Seri Indians helped me uh, to know that you can be very happy in a very small space and you can even have lots of people in a very small space and everyone be happy. Uh, very un-American. This is an early Natu Molina roadrunner. But they were finer later on. Not sure. Anyway, long time. These things are all so personal to me that I am just taken back down memory lane every time I look at any of it. I'm Jim Lindell. In Seri, my name is Apotosa. That's the last name that I was given. The first was Kisas. In Seri Indians, they would present me with a carving or basket or a necklace to buy. And I, if I wasn't going to buy it right then and there, I would tell them Kisas, which means perhaps in Spanish. And so I said that so often that they began calling me Kisas. I began trading with them in 1973. It was my first trip in the summer, early summer of 73. I went to Kino Bay with my friend Don Lee. That was the first time I saw any Seri carvings or any series. Their work was just fantastic. I couldn't believe it. And I thought to myself, you don't see these things anywhere in the States. Anywhere. Oh. See, here's a carving with an eagle on it, on a cactus. And this, unfortunately, was made by a man who is now dead. Uh, the Saris very well know what they need and the an all the other animals around them. They live in the desert by the sea, on the sea, and they know uh, what they carve. And the Sari carvings, it's are made of wood. So this is Tesoto Olenia, is the scientific name. And this is, this only occurs in the Sonoran Desert. The Sonoran Desert begins just a little south of here and includes Phoenix and all the way down to past Guaymas, uh, Mexico, Sonora. You should think ironwood. It's the most dense wood on this continent. Only lead wood in Florida is of comparable density. It sinks, it will not float. And I mean a tiny piece of ironwood. It is incredible wood. I love the smell of it. I've spent so many years smelling ironwood burning, you know, because of course the little chips as they're carving 
would, that was their firewood. And they wouldn't waste it, you know, you had to, it was work to go out in the desert and find iron wood and get a piece that you could make a carving out of. They wouldn't waste it, not at all. Uh, so, Jose Astorga, he initiated the making of Seri carvings. Now this carving is when Jose was dying, Jose had told his daughter Olga Astorga, who is now likewise dead, uh, to make busts of his head and she would be able to sell every one she did. Uh, <laughs> he told her. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience in Mexico in the Seri villages. My name is Mike Gray and I volunteer and work with the series primarily on economic development now. I've worked with them professionally in the past uh, as a coordinator of volunteer service projects for the Quakers, the American Friends Service Committee in the southwest areas and, and in other parts of Mexico too. Okay, let's roll. Almost 20 years I've been working with this series on, on different projects. It's been really, really focused on economic development for about the last eight years, maybe. Really, what we saw is, is the fishing is not making money like it used to. The fish population in the Gulf is, is crashing. So the fishermen aren't making as much money as they used to. But we have been able to increase the sales of baskets and ironwood carvings to kind of make up for what the fishermen have lost. So the series are not getting richer, but they're kind of staying on par with the income that they had before. And so the fish said until the fishing gets better, they need to find another way of making a living. Uh, arts and crafts are culturally appropriate and people can do them sustainably and, and in harmony with the environment. I think it's a good, a good move as long as the outside world can buy them, sustain that. For now, it seems like a good way to go. a lot of volunteers and people who are interested in this area and want to go and see who they are, how they live. And so I take people with me frequently. Everybody in Mexico goes to the beach if they can. And so even in Semana Santa, people come out to Desemboque, but they don't usually come to the town. They'll go to the beaches north or south of town and just camp on the beach. 
there's you know there's no hotel in town there's no restaurant in town there's just no real attraction for tourists uh, other than a few little markets if they need something but most people bring everything they eat with them so this area certainly don't benefit much from that kind of tourism Of the government, uh, when the government try to protect foreign, they just don't care. Uh, it's such a, a little thing to the government, you know, in, in terms of how many dollars or how many people are affected. They really don't seem to give it much importance. There are no sounds but birds and wind in the early light of morning in Seri Village. It's so quiet. It's not like the cities we live in with horns blasting and people busy walking around. You can hardly find any signs of the modern society. This is Desembake. It's an ordinary fishing village sitting by the edge of the Sonoran Desert and Sea. The Siri Indians call it home. This is Alejandro Diaz Felix. Like others, he is waiting for Mike Gray to try to sell his works. Alejandro used to be a fisherman but he changed his career path to become a full-time ironwood carver. Siri Indians were highly dependent on the ocean. 
they had access to marvelous marine resources that unfortunately we may never see again. Historically, they were a nomadic people who followed the migration of fish and wildlife along the main coastline of the Gulf of California, from Puerto Lobos down to Guaymas Bay. They were hunter-gatherers who maintained an intimate relationship with both the land and the sea. Since the 17th century, the Siri population has never been more than a thousand due to disease and warfare, first with the Spanish and the Mexicans later on. By the 1930s, the Siri population were as low as 300. They are now mainly settled in El Desembarque and Punta Chueca, which is a couple of kilometers across from their native land, Tiburon Island. The Siri still try to make a living from the sea as much as possible. Fishing was the major source of income. It is until 1963 when a man named Jose Astorga changed that. He made the very first ironwood carving for an American friend and coincidentally created a new market for the tribe. Like father, like daughter, Aurora Astarga has inherited talent and craftsmanship from her father as a fine machete user. She knows how to manipulate and shape ironwood and has become an icon among the ironwood carvers in the village. When handling wood, it's common for the wood to crack or be eaten by insects, even for ironwood, which is as hard as metal. To fix those cracks, Aurora uses crystallized saps from the creosote bush and various plants, which her family collects in the desert, to fill in the holes and cracks. With delicate sanding and polishing, those cracks or holes in the surface of the carving are hardly noticeable. The production of a Siri carving is not normally a one-man job. You will see a couple of family members sitting together, led by a carver like Aurora is now, to go through the whole process. 
<laughs> Usually, the carver outlines the shape of the carving and the details. Then his or her daughters and sons finish the rest, either with sanding or polishing. Others sit next to them to learn by watching. By doing so, the art of the carving is being passed down to the next generation. During the summer, 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit is quite typical, but the heat does not stop Aurora's family from collecting ironwood. Now Aurora's family's goal is to look for dead or fallen desert ironwood trees because those are ideal materials for carving or firewood. Desert ironwood is the common name, but its scientific name is Tesota onneya. It's native to the Sonoran Desert and is indicative of that desert. It's the highest species there. It can reach to almost 10 meters high. They are a very slow growing species and according to researchers, some trees are told to be more than 800 years old in the desert. Generally, you'll see them growing along the valleys and sandbanks, which are washed out by water in the desert. They are evergreen plants, even in the dry season. The extreme environment makes it very hard and dense, even denser than water, which also accounts for their varied and unpredictable grains. These trees are considered one of the top 10 heaviest woods in the world. During the search for ironwood, the family splits into a couple of small groups. Some of them carry a 10-foot long wooden pole with a small knife attached to the top of it and a bucket because they are picking cactus fruits as well. They use these poles to cut the fruits from the top of sometimes two-story tall cacti without getting pricked. When out in the desert, Ceres always eat these cactus or fruits as supplements to keep them hydrated and energized. They say a bite of cactus fruit can be both refreshing and also life-saving, especially after a long walk in the desert. There are, of course, some Siri recipes for cactus fruits. For example, they may eat it raw or slice it to bite size and dip it with honey. They also make alcohol from the cactus as well. You'll see them serving cactus wine during special occasions, such as the New Year. It is sweet and tasty, and also very strong. Aurora 
Laura's family and other series would never try to cut down any living ironwood trees. They collect fallen limbs or cut down the dead part of the trees. They only take what they need, and they never take too much. This is not only because they know how easily green wood will crack and make it unsuitable for carving the tools, but they feel it is important for the sustainability of the forests. They collect the wood carefully because they want to save the trees for the future. They treasure the forests and everything the land gives them. However, overlogging by the Mexicans, climate change and other factors have caused a huge decline of the forests. This is a serious issue to the Siri culture and nature. Aurora's family and other villagers now have to travel farther to collect ironwood. Aurora's family comes back from the desert with the wood they collected, they sort out the good ones for carving and leave the rest as firewood or other usage. Desert ironwood burns consistently, which is why it is excellent for cooking or heating a room. Even though gas stoves are installed in most homes now, the series still prefer to cook meals with firewood because it's hot and it's free. Not everyone here can afford propane gas. Traditionally, when it comes to food, Ceres would make bread from mesquite or ironwood seed flour. But it's not often seen nowadays. They mostly make wheat bread now. Aurora's daughter is using ground wheat flour to make dough which will later turn into some sort of flatbread, which is known as the Siri bread. It's about time to cook dinner for the family now. The fire is going and the pan is hot and ready. They press the dough into small round shapes and then gently place those into the hot pan to fry them. They generally eat these flatbreads plain or sometimes with hot sauce. What shows up on the dining table besides the Siri bread is what they catch during the day. It may be fish, crab, prawn, or maybe nothing at all. And thanks to Aurora's son-in-law, the kitchen is serving fish fingers and Siri bread tonight.
Most artists in the village still generally follow Jose Astorga's style of carving, and they carve in the old method, using a knife and machete, because it wasn't that long ago that electricity was installed in the village. Miguel Estrella used to work with an international NGO called Ocean Revaluation for projects here. He is also now an active artist. Miguel's work is influenced by Jose as well, but more than that, his carving is also inspired by Armando Torres. Armando is another well-known carver whose work is famous for swimming turtles and sea life with curved bodies. Bruce Lee. So, uh, I got mom. I got mom. Uh, and so, uh, I have to go to the hospital. I have to go to the hospital. I have to go to the for the series, the sea turtle plays an important role in their history and culture. It used to be one of their main sources of food. The elders also believed they could talk to sea turtles. It was said that when the earth was covered with water, there was a leatherback sea turtle. It flipped mud onto its back and created a land where people can live. And that's how Tiburon Island came about. So whenever they encounter a leatherback, they always hold a four-day festival for it. <laughs> Like Aurora, Miguel teams up with his wife and they share the work together most of the time. <laughs> One distinctive feature about Siri ironwood carving is the lack of details, such as the lack of eyes. Unlike Mexican ironwood carving that is usually done by machines and has artificial eyes, Siri carving simply brings out more of the vivid characteristics of the animals. It's more alive. And these make Siri carvings so different and unique. Due to the recession, however, the cheaper prices of the imitation Mexican carvings took a toll on the sales of Siri ironwood carvings and deeply impacted Siri artists' incomes. The sale of baskets also suffers. 
In fact, series were first recognized for their beautiful and collectible baskets rather than ironwood carvings. People were amazed by the finely made and high quality Siri baskets. The baskets once brought good fortune to the village when the economy was doing well. Miguel's older sister, Bertha Estrella, is one of the best weavers in town. <laughs> Siri is a matriarchal society. Women do most of the work except for fishing. Similarly, basket making is under their domain as well. You rarely see a man sitting in the group and helping in the process of weaving. And there's an interesting tale about Siri basket. Scorching is the first step in the basket making process because it's easier for Bertha to peel off the bark when that outer bark of the torote is burned. The inner white stems of the torote are what she is after and those are the fundamentals of weaving. The weaving segment comes together when certain white stems are collected. It is a long and arduous process for Bertha. It may take her weeks, sometimes years, to finish a basket, depending on the size and the complexity of the pattern she wants to accomplish. Pagama is out on Bucca. 
Bertha is now increasing her pace as the new year is right around the corner. That means there'll be tourists visiting the village and walking around. She needs to get more baskets in stock because every sale counts. As the new year is approaching, women in the village start decorating the place where the celebration will be. They tie plastic ribbons on the poles in three different colors, blue, white, and red. These are the colors of their national flag. When night falls, people from all parts of the village start showing up and make their way toward the only school in town. There is a graduation ceremony tonight. They bring cakes and sodas to cheer for the kids who finished their studies this year. The children are taught in both the Spanish and Siri languages. support for the educational system and financial aid from the government, as well as the widespread use of Spanish in the country, the elders are worried and concerned that the younger generation will soon face the problem of self-identification and start forgetting their native tongue. This is becoming an inevitable trend for the ethnic tribes in Mexico. They really can't stop this from happening without money. A lo que son los estudiantes étnicos de aquí de De aquí no más del desemboque. Tenemos un rezago educativo porque no hay apoyo del gobierno mexicano. No hay, que digamos, ayuda por algún este, sustento alimenticio, sustento monetario para, para seguir impulsando la educación indígena. Se den cuenta que nosotros los indígenas seres también queremos salir adelante, que también ocupamos este, educación, también ocupamos este, que nos impulsen para que nuestros hijos o nuestras familias este, estudien y sigan adelante, pues para que el día de mañana ellos vean por nuestro pueblo. Porque como les comento, pues de la artesanía aquí vamos a estar nomás, pues nunca vamos a salir del the lawyer on the stand. Many preparations are still taking place on the morning of the new year, and events are happening throughout the village. At the beach, women are now busy building shades that were once used in the past. These shades are now more symbolic than actually functional. They are now mostly built for festivals and ceremonies. <laughs> you will find many parties going on when you walk through the village. People are generally sharing food like Siri bread to all of the visitors. Everyone is welcome. Kids and teenagers sit together and paint beautiful patterns on their faces with different watercolors. The paint and their faces are simply beautiful. In the past, Siri Indians painted their faces to avoid bad spirits and to protect themselves from sunburn. It is now more for taking photos and catching the eyes of tourists. So the first thing a lot of tourists will do now is to get their faces painted. 
It's also a good opportunity for the villagers to push the sales of their handcrafts, such as necklaces, carvings, or baskets. Singing and laughing can be heard everywhere starting in the morning, with people sitting under the shade and kids dancing in their traditional costumes. The vibe is a joyful one throughout the village. The new year is at the end of the dry season, with all waiting for the monsoon rain in the desert, which usually starts in late June. When the rain starts, it's when the desert comes alive, and that's how the series believe it's the beginning of a new year. It's the best time of the year to be around, because that's when everything is coming alive and growing again. Every year they celebrate the new year and invite people to join for not only fun, but also to promote their culture. As time goes on, more people, more tourists flood in. At the fiesta, the elders sing their traditional songs, and men and children will take turns and accompany the rhythm with foot drums. Women sit in a round circle that is surrounded by organ pipe cactus and play a gambling game. This is a game reserved only for women. The celebration can last from dawn until midnight. When night falls, everything goes even more active. Men would gather around a box filled with sand and play a gambling game as well. There is face painting, cactus wine, deer dancing performed by Aurora's grandson, and more. Everyone's faces are filled with joy and big smiles. However, behind these happy faces still looms an uncertain future. How will they retain this way, this way that they live and their culture in the modern world? Series believe their culture is beautiful because of their isolation from outsiders. Their arts and crafts, ironwood carvings and baskets might be a path of hope for them but it is still an unanswered question.